this city, burned to the ground over a century ago, has risen as something new. Always making and remaking its own story. Built from the ground up, the spirit of battle is in our bones. Before he built the most dominant team to ever play in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, W.C. Gordon created a timeless symbol. Six lines, three bold letters, a hand-drawn sketch on the back of a napkin thrust into history. As bold as our city and as mighty as the river that shapes our state, the block insignia is inextricable from our storied legacy. A red accent for the ages. We wear it to remember our legends and to celebrate the fierceness of our survival story. His team won 28 straight SWAC games and captured eight SWAC championships in a single decade. No team has had an era more dominant. No team won as consistently as the Mac of the SWAC. The red of battle is in our bones, not just in contests with our most heated rivals, but for the martyrs of our yard and for the Jacksonians who marched against fear to topple Mississippi's tallest ghost. The red was worn by our greatest teams and raised as the banner for JSU. This year, it returns as an official nod to glory days and a flash forward to a new era of dominance. For the champions on the diamond and the gridiron, on the courts and the lanes, blue and white will always be our true colors. Gordon Red is an accent for the ages. Tiger fans, welcome to episode 180 of the official Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club podcast, bringing you all the latest news, updates, and buzz surrounding your mighty JSU Tigers. I am the Corey C. Be sure to download and subscribe to the podcast to be notified of every new episode. Apple Podcast users, rate and review the show. And everyone, follow Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club on Facebook and Tiger Talk 1400 on Instagram and Twitter. It all helps the cause, which is the I love, Jackson State University. And on this episode of Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club, we're exploring Jackson State sports tradition and preserving history. When you think of JSU football historically, there aren't many things that are as synonymous with its golden era and the success that was attained as the color red. And although JSU fans are about as prideful about its colors blue and white as you'll find any fan base in America, there's no denying the significance and nostalgia of the red accent and the special place that it holds in many fans' hearts. But what is the history of the red? How did it come about? Why did it come about? Who implemented it? Why did it go away? And what or who brought it back? Now, most of us have heard stories and rumors addressing many of these questions, but Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club has gathered the facts from those who were there. We spoke to four Jackson State historians and captured their firsthand accounts of the origin, history, and significance of the red, an accent for the ages. Longtime Sports Information Director, Mr. Sam Jefferson, longtime Administrator and Professor, Dr. Hilliard Lackey, former football player, Eric Shorty Green, and the son of legendary coach W.C. Gordon. Robin Gordon. So, what's the story of the red? Shorty Green. Well, a lot of people don't know. The red was incorporated way before the football team. Um, the baseball team, Coach Gordon, was actually the head baseball coach in the early 70s. And if you look back at some of those pictures, and they'll remind you, they have red in their uniform. One of the reasons that he put it in there, and it was very symbolic. 
he said red had had courage and vigor you know it, it reminded him of life you know kind of like the blood flowing through and it was red was very appealing to the act and it added a little pizzazz a little fire a little life dr lackey i do remember that he was uh <clears throat> had the idea that red got people excited. Red made the blood rush. <laughs> and, and as you could get, I'm going to use my terminology, you could get crunked <laughs> because of the red color. Uh, and and, and <laughs> so that's what I do remember, either impressionally uh, or he actually said it over the years. But, but he was adamant about that, that red uh, cause your bl- blood to run faster, your heart to beat faster, a little palpitation of the heart. <laughs> and like I said, from the early 70s with the baseball team, first having some red incorporated into their uniforms, Coach Paul Covington added a little red in the basketball, the track added a little bit. So leading up to 77, Coach Gordon's first full season with uh, the football team, he incorporated the red into the football uniforms and the rest is history. Robin Gordon. Yes, uh, that was an ideal uh, of the accent for that splash for the red that came from my father. But and you got, I got to take you back and let you and give you a brief um, um, history, if you will, on, of my father, just quickly. My father's from Nashville, Tennessee. He's a graduate of Tennessee State. And um, Tennessee State had a tad bit. They they had some red sprinkles in there. We are we almost have similar colors, but the blue of Jackson State is a richer, darker blue than the the blue at Tennessee State. But going back to my father, my father was a a a, a dapper minded person. He he liked for, he likes for people to be clean. He <laughs> he loved clothes. Um, he loves he, he loves shopping. I'm talking about from the from the shoes all the way up to coats to everything. So he likes to look good, and he likes for people around him to look good. <laughs> and he um, was always um, a fan. He used to tell me I'm, uh, he was always a fan of the Cleveland Browns, uh, and he loved their uniform. Because of the, he liked, he, and the word he used was tricolors. He said, I love the tricolors. You know, Cleveland had the brown, the orange, and the white. And, and you can go to Green Bay Packers with the green, the yellow, and the white. And um, he just w- was a big fan of tricolors. And um, he wanted to incorporate that. So that's where he came up with the, the red to accept the uniform at Jackson State University. During that time, if you, if you remember, he I remember he say that, uh, you know, NFL teams at that time were going to the tricolor. You know, a lot of teams just had two colors, but they were going to the tricolor. And he would always talk about the Buffalo Bills and how the Buffalo Bills had that tricolor with that blue and that white, and they added that red, even though it was a different blue, but they added that red. And it was something about that red and that, Buffalo Bills uniform that just stood out. And, um, you know, and, and he would always he would mention, you know, another, another black school he would sometimes mention, you know, who, who had a different colors was, was Grambling. You know, Coach Robinson had, uh, you know, had the black and the gold, but they also had orange. A lot of people, if they don't remember those uniforms. And, uh, of course, his alma mater, Tennessee State. But, It wasn't necessarily about um, them and their colors, but it was just about him um, loving the tricolors and, 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 you know, and and liking that accent because he likes, he, he he just, he likes things to look, likes things to look good. And uh, he wanted to add that splash or that accent, if you will. Also during that time, Gremlin had a little red in their uniform. So during those times, guys, you know, the coaching fraternity back then, they were real, real close. And Coach Coach saw that impact that, that Gramlin had with that red, too. We didn't go whole hog. <laughs> nah, we didn't go red, red, red. 
like uh, Gramlin did on occasion and Valley on occasion, and I can't, I don't remember what Southern did, and uh, but I do remember that Valley and Gramlin put in that red. And it, it I mean, yeah, again, it was that fire, that fire and that courage that it brought. When when you look at that red and that uniform, that blue and white looks good now. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. But when you had that little red into there, it just adds a little something of pizzazz to it that kind of gets your blood flowing. And so Coach Gordon explained to the alumni at the alumni meeting what he was doing, and that was to put a red accent. He said red, and he was speaking uh, informally and colloquially, red uh, caused the blood to rush. He said the wind in schools across America Generally had red. Uh, uh, Nebraska at that time had red, and Alabama, because Ole Miss got a form of red. So red seemed to have been with the winning schools across America at that point in time. And so the SWAC, according to what I believe Coach Gordon said on that day, had decided that red and white were universal uh, colors are neutral colors and that, that they didn't take from the school colors because they were just uh, anybody could wear those colors in addition to their school colors. You know, I'm a football referee at the high school level and what I have uh, observed over the years and it's in writing, it's in, it's in codes and policy that the uh, travel team is permitted to wear white, no matter what their home colors are. And when they're at home, they wear their school colors generally, and the visiting team has to wear an opposite and contrasting color, which can be white. So white became or is a universal color, a neutral color that any team can wear regardless of the school colors, even in high school and in college. So the SWAC is my belief. <laughs> the SWAC decided that that you could uh, wear red as a neutral color, a universal color. Mr. Sam Jefferson. There were some people who didn't didn't like the idea that red was being introduced to the uniform because you know, uh, they believe our colors are blue and white and that we should stick with that blue and white. That was a vocal group. Now, I don't know whether or not that there were a, a smaller or larger group of people who could have been considered maybe the silent people. Uh, it could have been a silent majority. But I do know some people did not like the idea that the red was introduced. There were a couple of old alumni, and I couldn't tell you the names. They went to the president, who was unaware of the past history, and told him that Jackson State true colors are are this. And I think the first president was, uh, they went to Hefner and tried to get him to change. But uh, we were winning. We were winning year after year after year, and we had some, and this was really, my he, my father wasn't gonna make a change. He said, "Look, man, this is what we gonna wear. This is what our fans expect. This is what we do. This is what we love." And, and uh, but he was questioned by Hefner, I think, at the time. And um, and and after he basically told him that, he left him alone. <laughs> now, had he not been winning or something, and and and, and doing poorly as far as victories are concerned, uh, he probably. He may have could have pushed that, but we had he had too much going on, and our graduate the graduation graduation rate of the football players was higher than the student population, as well as the gradu- graduation rate was higher than all other institutions of higher learning in the state of Mississippi. That includes Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Southern Mississippi for foot for football players. So we were not only were we doing it. Athletically, we we were doing it academically. And he did make a presentation, and I was in the audience about red initially, because he wanted to explain that to the alumni, because folks were a little bit perturbed or concerned at that point, as they are now, 
about how does red come about and what's the meaning of it. So he, he at the, again, I'm repeating for emphasis, said that that was a swag decision that red was a color that any of the schools could use in the swag at that point and add it to their school colors. And if you watch uh, some of the teams that are out there right now, and there are some teams that play um, that we see on television that will have on almost different color uniforms, at least different color helmets every week. I can think about Oregon. Uh, they just introduced a different helmet, a different uh, kind of a uniform. So a lot different from the way it was, say, 20 or 30 years ago. Look at your o Oregon's. Look how, how many different colors and changes they make. You know what I mean? And uh, variety is the spice of life. And uh, that was the type of person my father was. And, uh, and that's the kind of the culture we have in the black community. Uh, there are only two schools I know that that's, that's have kept one traditional uniform, and that's Penn State and Alabama. <laughs> Everybody else, are, they, they're keeping their main colors, and they're evolving. And uh, that's one thing he, he said, too, in the past. He's the only schools I know is keeping that same uniform. It's Penn State and Alabama. That same basic set, but everybody else evolves and making changes around their their basic main colors. The red would ultimately become a staple that's embedded in the fabric of Jackson State's history and tradition. But when Coach Gordon first implemented it, could he have possibly known the impact and significance that it would have? I don't. I don't believe he knew that at the time, even with him living through it. And, and seeing during the height of it, I don't think he really, he knew the impact that he had on the, not only just the program, but Jackson State University because of that red. That red, uh, I mean, I talked to a lot of former guys from uh, Grambling, Southern, um, Valley, Alabama State, especially Alabama State, um, that played against in the, in the late 80s. And some guys, some older guys from the early 80s as well. And those guys will talk about that red. When Jackson State came with that red, you know, during those times, you get off the bus, you was already up 21 points because guys were intimidated by that red. And that was stuck in the mindset of, of the fans and other teams out there. Oh, here they come. And then you got the sonic boom playing in the background on top of it. And Lord have mercy. Okay, they coming down here and they get ready. We, we win a lot of ball games before the – before it started, when we come out, we had red, red uh, shimmy shirts on and stuff and uh, working out on the field. And you could see the, the, the other team, they would stop stop working out and doing their pregame and, and watch us come on the field and go through our rah-rah and our pregame warm-up. They just stop and start looking. And we knew right then, we looked at it, and we going up back in the locker room and put on our full uniform. Man, did you see them cats looking at us? I said, yeah, he said, they scared already. The game already won, so it was a mindset. <laughs> Coach Gordon did say to me directly that that face mask, uh, when that got it got when the uh, lineman got down into that stance, and, and that face mask was across that uh, line of scrimmage, it put the fear of God into the hearts of the opposition. <laughs> so wow. he was adamant about that that little red being there. At that point in time, just that accent. He wasn't talking about the, the socks or the stripe down the leg or something like that. He talking about on that helmet. <laughs> he, that, that red in that helmet, he could see it. He said, when that when they get in that three-point stance, ah, oh, yes, they were playing Jackson State, baby. They had to tremble. <laughs> but when he first developed it, him thinking that, this would be such a big deal and a staple? No, not at all. He um, he he came to me and he was always the type to like sit down. He'd go to the drawer and get some typing paper, and he would like draw up what he wanted, what he wanted to see. And he'd say, "Come in, come over here and check this out and see what's your what, what's your, what's your opinion? How do you like it?" And that's exactly what he did, as far as the the stripes on the on the on the on the on the sleeves 
you know, uh, mixing that blue and the red and the white, how he designed that. And also that the stripe down the side with the, um, you know, with the pants, the togs, as we used to call them, football pants, as well as um, even on the, the, the numbers, you know, he accent the numbers with a red outline. And um, and then to the face mask, um, you got the, but the red face mask, which kind of evolved um, more so, say, 78. But they did kind of set in the sort of the first full season, season of 77. Some of the guys had red face masks. Some had gray face masks. But by 78, everything was full blown and everybody had the red face mask. And 78, you got people like Jeffrey Moore and Tony Harris. And, man, those cats were, um, they were sharp, sharp dressers themselves. And, uh, man, so they, they put red in the socks. And uh, as time evolved through the through the mid '80s, man, guys, you know, and we wore the spats. You know, we had the white spat, right? Mm-hmm. Well, cats would. Uh, we started they, in the mid '80s when, by the time Jackie Walker and Leon Seals and that bunch hit, that was out that left, a little bit out that left. Those guys would go and buy red spray paint, and they would spray paint the spat red. Oh Lord, you talking about clean? <laughs> not only clean, but uh, there was discipline and winning at, at the same time. And it was such a beautiful era. And um, I don't know if you remember seeing Jeffrey Moore, Perry Harrington, uh, and uh, Michael Stewart when they were running at Wishbone and Keith Taylor. They, they used to wear that red tam on the head. You know, and it, it, the not red tam was originally purchased to distinguish between offense and defense when say you're doing seven on seven, but you know, they found it easy because that tam would slip off the helmet. They just found it easier to, you know, to the defense always wore blue and the offense wore white and the quarterbacks had a little red, red Jersey to, to, to put on top of them to distinguish them. But, um, uh, but the red tams, so the guys started using the red tams, and they would put it over their heads. And um, and in those days, you know, Jerry curls had started, <laughs> and the hair was a, still was a longer style of hair, plus with some of the, the Jerry curl, and they would put their tam on, and there were plenty of pictures on the sidelines of, of of those guys. And one one great story was. We were recruiting Marcus Dupree. And I remember Marcus Dupree getting on the bus in the parking lot at TBLS because that's where we always ventured to Memorial Stadium uh, for a home ball game from TBLS. And uh, Marcus says, Coach Gordon, can I get one of those red Tams? Because every time they showed highlights or they showed the guys on the sidelines, it's, those guys would have, especially those running backs, they wore those red tams, you know, and it accented the uniform on the sideline. It looked so good. And he wanted one. He said, man, I got one for you right here. And um, I think if it wasn't for some of the resources that some of those, that the Oklahoma and Southern Mississippi and some of the Power Five schools had at the time uh, and some of the offers that were given to them, we would have had Marcus on, on, on 1400 Lynch Street. <laughs> Because he was uh, in love with Jackson State and used to call all the time. JSU surprisingly went away from the red in its uniforms around the turn of the century. So how did Coach Gordon feel about that? Well, his basic thoughts, I'm going to go back to that first statement about he likes to look good. He just basically said a hey, that uniform is just, it's not as pretty as what we wore. <laughs> like I said, he was a, a dapper person. He liked to look good. And his and, and he said, when you look good, you're going to play good. And uh, he wasn't as, as talkative as Dion is about it to everybody. And, you know, because Dion's going to tell you that everybody. But my father was kind of, you know, he kept that kind of stuff in the house. But uh, a lot of people didn't know about some of that type of his attitude toward that. But uh, he, he just said it doesn't look as good as my, the uniform that we developed, that we had developed. And he wasn't going to even say I developed. It wasn't as good as the, the uniform that we developed when I was coaching. 
and that's the type of person he was. Well, Coach Gordon, I think he liked that. He liked the red to be on that uh, face mask or something because he said that block, that JSU block. That's, I think uh, somebody came here. I want to say it was that that coach that we don't ever get his name. <laughs> I, it, it, it's a sacrilegious to call the name of a man who that we didn't want to be the coach. Who was the coach? Who changed everything? But he took that block, JSU, off that helmet. But he also took that red face mask away. Well, me and Coach never really talked about it, but I could tell it was a little disappointing, um, disheartening. But, um, yeah, our teammates, some of the teammates, guys, we really talked about it because after judges, Robert Hughes, last year, brought in a new coach. And the coach at that time that they brought in, we usually don't say his name around here. (laughs) We don't. No, we don't. Yeah, but he threw away everything in those uh in the warehouse in that supply closet equipment closet that had red red uniforms red sweatsuits shimmy shirts cleats everything that was red in that equipment room was thrown away and put into a dumpster now you know some of the guys were kind of upset because it was like you know we could have done a fundraiser and got you know get some of that stuff and raffled it off or whatever because guys wanted that stuff but it was thrown away. Nobody had a chance to get it. But it was some stuff that he did not know existed that mm-hmm. we were able to get our hands on years after he left. Uh, a lot of people don't know uh, equipment is held in another location that, that was away from the TBLS building also. So uh, thank you, Dr. Scott. He's with the facilities department of athletics as well over at the AAC. Found a couple of boxes. It had some old game jerseys in it with the red in it. So, and um, he went on and was able to get some guys their numbers and their jerseys. You know, we did a little a fundraiser with it so we could raise some money for the for the football program. And guys kind of you know did a fundraiser and got their jerseys back. Years later, the red started to slowly find its way back. So, what's the story of the return of the red? Well, the, we, we kind of pushed. I know towards a couple of seasons ago, we would have games like the all corn game where we'd be like, hey, got to have some red accent. You'll see some guys with gloves, uh, guys with towels and socks and stuff like that, and the cleats and wristbands that started coming back and bringing that red back. You know, we bleed that blue boot, that uh, original blue and red is what we would call it. And um, when that when it, we started doing that, it added a little spunk to coach. You know, it, it wasn't disheartening anymore, but, you know, it was what I would call an affirmation that, you know, this is, this is what we are. This is where we, where we were. This is, this is who we are. And it was, a, it was, you know, very affectionate, you know, coming from the guys. Cause that's what, that's what some of the guys knew coming in. And that's how we grew up on with that, with that red as well. So he was very pleased that they were trying to incorporate it, even though it was not a official co- color, but he was pleased that they were trying to incorporate it and bring it back. You saw defensive backs, because I'm a detail guy too. I saw DBs out there with, you know, you put on the red stockings and you put the, you know, you fold the stockings over the top of your white socks and red uh, wristbands, uh, you know, and, and start accenting it with, with, with 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 that red in there, you know, with socks and, and like I said, and wristbands and other little uh, things that you can put on your uniform, and it and it just started taking back off. So yeah, I noticed it, and uh, it wasn't per se in the in the football pants or the the helmet or the um, or the jersey, but the guy started, you know, you like I said, you see it in the other some other pieces that they would add themselves, and it just took back off. And what did it mean to Coach Gordon to see the red start to make its return? Oh, he was very prideful. He loved it. Um, they started wearing it for the W.C. Gordon Classics. You know, when they had a W.C. Gordon Classic, they would wear red. And like you said, it slowly merged into more than just that game. And, some, you know, some of the players, the players would, 
pick certain games throughout the you know in the in the two thousands. Uh, and, and and they would wear red, and you're like, oh, they actually that red tonight, even though it's not the classic. So more and more, it came back. But his feelings on it was, hey man, it looks nice, it's pretty. It, it you see what it does? That accent does to the uniform. So his whole deal was, yes, he was prideful about it, but it wasn't him saying, yeah, I did it. He just. He just thought it, it looked good. It looked good for Jackson State University. It looked good for the football team. And, you know, like I said, on the onset of bringing it on, we were beating people down. And he said, to make sure you go back and remember that, it, that intimidation and that power, those powerful teams that we had in the, uh, uh, in the 70s and 80s and early 90s. So, hey. That's, that's that's basically was his his feelings about it. It just it looks nice. He, he was about to look right and, and playing well behind it. Coach Gordon figured that red uh, was a, an impressionable color, uh, and it it it, it sort of uh, uh, put put the uh, players and fans, for that matter, into another level, uh, elevation. They elevated their interest, hike, and and and. Uh, and enhance their interests and their spirits, he thought. So I would imagine that Coach Gordon would have uh, loved to see that red. I, that's what I would imagine. And, but I never had that conversation with him about an entire red uniform, only the accent. But I would imagine he would be pleased with it. Oh, man, he was grinning from ear to ear. I could see him grinning from ear to ear. And uh, that was that was really that was real nice um, with the accent of the blue and the white. But that was real nice to to let, you know, let it be shown that, you know, the love and admiration that people had for coach and it still goes on. You know, that's a that's a legacy that he started. And um, we just want to keep that legacy going on. Uh, We have a coach on staff now, Coach Prime, who uh, has brought red back into the uniform, not just or, or, and as an accent color, um, completely red uniforms on sometimes, at least a red color, red top, a red bottom, or just all red, I think. And you, you know, my father died this past October 23rd of 2020. And then his mind wasn't as strong as it, as it was. But, you know, when, when, when Coach, when was Coach Sanders' name? Uh, September 21st. September 21st. One month before your father died. One month before he died. So he was able, he had days where he was able to mentally capture what was said. And he he heard his name at the press conference. So, you know, when when, when they came into the AAC. And so he paid homage uh, to my father. And um, only thing I regret, I, 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 I would have loved for Coach Sanders and my father to have met. And I think Coach Sanders was respecting the fact that he knew my dad was uh, kind of sick and um, he didn't want to, you know, he just may not have just wanted to come over, but it would have been nice for him to have come over and met uh, them to have actually met each other personally, which never happened, but it's okay. Uh, he's met him through all the tradition that you see uh, when you walk into those football offices and all the, and, and the stories I know he's he's heard, so you know it's okay, it's okay. And we cannot talk about JSU tradition and talk about the red without talking about the block. Well, Jackson State actually had an oval shape. It was kind of shaped like a football on the side of the helmet, and it had the JSU went from JSC to JSU on the side. But he wanted to place those letters strategically place them in a, in a certain way that was certain that was what he called different you know something he 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 was a a, a trendsetter you you never had anything that kind of looked like that you never seen any other helmet you seen helmets with the letters that go across the the helmet and stuff but you never seen the block and you never seen it stacked like that and he did his homework on that he wanted to have something that was very unique something that would stand out uh, away from everybody else. He could have easily put a big J on there. He could have gone with just a, a JSU on the side, but to stack those letters, he said, 
by stacking those letters, it was something unique. It was something different. And it, it was, again, it, it caught your eye when you saw it. It was appealing to the eye. And when you look at it and when you see it down on those shirts and you see it on a hat, I mean, it's no question. When you see that, no matter where you are, you know that's Jackson State right there. The block was just a wonderful thing. It 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 came along at the time that we were really Jackson State. We were dominant. <laughs> we was growing as a university, and the football team were whipping up on folks, and the basketball team were doing what it does, and, and then, you know the golf and all. We was on a roll when the block came along, and so the block just became a a, a, a fixation. And and it related so much to the times that we were having, and and, and so I that's one thing I don't care if the times always change. I'm I'm going to stick with the block as my favorite. I like that, and I'm not going to change. I refuse to change. <laughs> I won't change with the times with that. I love that block, baby. I know they put you on and introduced the block letters, especially with the helmet design uh, when he got and and like I said earlier. Uh, when each coach comes on, uh, when, when, when the university gets a new coach, they like to add that signature to, what, to something that they do. And, and the block letters on the helmet was Coach Gordon's signature, and, and it just stuck. I don't remember people uh, complaining about it. I, I, I do remember uh, one media representative, and I can't recall exactly who it was. They thought it was a bland-looking helmet. Land, you know, not, not nothing uh, 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 exceptional or anything, but it stuck. People liked it. We've had it. I know, I believe, since the mid '80s. Uh, when that, I remember we put it on the cover of the uh, the, the brochure. I believe it may have been late '70s uh, when we came out with that block JSU on the helmet and. And it's stuck, and you see it on our, our baseball caps and things like that. And a lot of people wear the block letters. He hand drew that on a on a on a napkin. He did. He did. That was the prototype right there. He would sit down, and he he was trying to draw a different logo. At that time, we kind of had the football shaped logo that said JSC, Jackson State College, or JSU, and and on, on the side of the helmet. And then he developed, uh, he, he came up with a couple of designs. He said, I don't want that J in the middle with an S and a U to the side. You know, the J being big, like uppercase, and the S and the U to the side. Kind of like you got TSU, T in the middle, S to the to the left, and C or the U to the, to the right side. And uh, he didn't want, you know, he said, man, that, that looks too much like them. We need something new. So he just kept drawing stuff, and then he came up with the the J in the front and the S in the U in a, in a block style. And he said, "I think I'm gonna go with I think I'm gonna go with this, Robin. And I think we want to make that uh, that like a, a block block a rectangle, and we want to make that uh, red accent that red. And we also gonna put the same type of stripe design that we have on the on the shoulders and the pants." We're going to put that on the helmet, too, down the middle. And I says, wow, I'm, I like it. I think that's going to be sharp. And he did it. And uh, and I think the rest, you can almost say, is history. And history it is. This episode is in loving memory of the legendary Coach W.C. Gordon. May his legacy live on forever through the JSU block and Gordon Red. And that'll do it for episode 180 of Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club. Thank you to all of our listeners. And again, be sure to download and subscribe to the podcast. Apple Podcast users, rate and review the show. And everyone, follow Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club on Facebook and Tiger Talk 1400 on Instagram and Twitter. I cannot stress the importance of this enough. We're looking to do some big things with this platform to aid the athletics department. And it all starts with you. Downloading, subscribing, rating, and reviewing the show. And tell every tiger that you know. We're on all podcast outlets. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and so on. 
and we'll be posting each episode on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. As always, thanks for your support. Go Tigers. Hashtag the I love.